Hello. Okay, so today I'm going to give you a taste of what we do here in the lab. And uh, in that vein, we're going to be synthesizing a reagent known as DMC. So uh, it all starts with this piece of glassware, which is a Schlink tube. So because the reaction is very water sensitive, we need to make sure that there is no air and no moisture on the glassware. I'm going to first grease the stopcock. So this is a small amount of vacuum grease and this is going to ensure a tight seal between the glassware so that no air gets in. And now I'm going to put the whole apparatus under vacuum here and I have a little vacuum tube. I'll put that in there. Go ahead and clamp this securely. And we'll turn on the vacuum. So turn on the fire. And, now we cook. and this should get rid of most of the moisture. Okay, so now we're going to let that cool and we'll check back in in another five minutes or so. Okay, five minutes have passed and it's cool to the touch. So we're going to go ahead and backfill now with an inert gas that's dry. So nitrogen gas will be the gas of choice. So if I turn this knob here, We'll get some nitrogen pressure and backfill. And we're going to keep the whole apparatus under nitrogen the whole time. So for that, I have this little needle of inert gas. You see the bubbles indicating the gas is flowing. Stick that right in there. Okay, so at this point, it's time to add our two ingredients, or reagents. So the first is 1,3-dimethyl-2-imidazolidinone. Okay, and this is a pretty old bottle, it looks like, but it should still be good. And the second reagent is phthalyl chloride, which is very reactive. If you've taken organic chemistry, you'll know this is a diacid chloride, so it reacts violently uh, when we open that bottle, so we'll have to be very careful with that. And we need 3.35 milliliters of the imidazolidinone. So first I will purge the needle with some nitrogen. So I'll stick it in here and borrow some nitrogen. And now I'll get 3.35 mils of this guy. That reagent's been added. Okay, now here's the fun one. And Byron, I'm going to have to call on you for help here. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing and we're going to purge the needle. Hello. And as I open this, you're going to see there's going to be a pressure release and some smoke. I'll let you add your reagent. Okay. The reagents have been added. Okay. Now it's time to heat this bad boy up to 140 degrees. Let's go ahead and take it over here. Okay. 
Okay. Now in the bath and stirring, but the temperature's a little too low, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that to get it to 140, but we'll check back in five hours, because that's how long this reaction takes, and uh, see what we've got. All right. All right, so five hours has elapsed, and now it's time to take a look at what we've got here. So it seems I've removed the oil bath and I let it solidify here. And we've got what looks like a brown sludge. Not so great. Let's see if we can filter that, but of course, we need to filter it without letting it touch the air, because I said previously, the reagent is very sensitive to air and moisture, so we'll need to make sure that during the filtration process, it doesn't come in contact with uh, the outside oxygen. And I've, this is the uh, little contraption that we're gonna use to do the inert filtration. It essentially consists of a collection flask up here at the top, which we'll invert later, and a centered glass filter frit, which is gonna collect the solids. Okay, so uh, the procedure calls for the addition of 25 milliliters of dry dioxane. So for that, we'll need to go to the other room, so follow me. In order to obtain dry dioxane, I set up this distillation still last night. And it's been boiling down here, and the pure solvent uh, collects on top. Here, show them. Here's the uh, purified dried solvent, and here is what's boiling downstairs. The blue color indicates that it's dry. So we need 25 milliliters of this. Now we've got our solvent. And we're going to go ahead and add it to the mixture. Being sure to wash down the sides. Oh, that goodness. Okay, now we have a good amount of basically a solid chunk in there, and we need to break that up. So for that I'm going to use the needle to poke that thing. And I'm going to adjust the magnetic stir bar, stirring rate. And you can see, if you look carefully, there's some suspended solids in there. And those suspended solids are what we want. It's looking pretty good in there. And we just want to make sure this is at, you know, room temperature, so that most of the solids are not soluble. And I can see, yeah, we've got a good amount of product in there. Now the challenge will be getting it out of there without screwing up. Okay, so I think we're ready for the filtration. So I'm going to remove the nitrogen needle. And cleanse. Next, I'm going to remove this dummy flask and begin the flow, a strong flow of nitrogen gas. Now that we've got a good connection here, I'm going to go ahead and split my suction to the top. And now we're going to rotate.
that is a really large ring of solid. Okay, so at this point we can go ahead and suck down our liquid. And we do that by applying a little vacuum. Nice. Now we need to figure out how to break up these solids without disturbing too much. Now you see we've already collected a fair amount of our um, material down there, and that's good. This is what we're going to be collecting. Uh, however, we've got a considerable amount upstairs that we need to break up and flush downwards. So for that, uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, well, uh, we didn't get as much as we wanted, but the question that's more important is because, well, we don't really care how much of this we have as long as we have some. The question then becomes, well, did we really make the right thing? And that is often a huge aspect of chemistry, is deciding uh, whether you have the compound you want, and then if you do, how pure is it? So, I'm going to bring it out here, and I'm going to show you how to prepare a sample for analysis. So, I had made this compound before, and when I made it before, it was an, a lighter color, but this looks darker, which might be an indication that we have an impurity in there, but there's only really one way to say for sure. So, for that, I will turn on the flow of nitrogen gas. Open up here and just dip my stick. Slowly want to turn on the vacuum. If you turn on too quickly, you risk sucking all of your material up into the system, and that is a mistake that I have made. You really just need a tiny amount. That looks pretty good. Okay, now this is the pipette pump. It'll allow me to dissolve this in a solvent system because in order to analyze it, it must be a liquid, not a solid, for the analysis that we're gonna perform. So I'll add the solvent, in this case, deuterated chloroform. Shake it up a bit, and there's our sample. Now we'll be back in a few minutes to check on the results. So from that sample that we submitted, we get this spectral printout. And we can see here we have one, two, three, four, four major peaks. Uh, so now the question is, is our product there? And if so, how pure? So the information we have are integration values as well as peak picking values. So we need to compare those against the literature. So it turns out we were not the first person to make this stuff. This is a well-known uh, protocol. However, it just came out last year. So uh, last year they discovered this method of generating uh, the reagent that we made uh, using this pathway. So let's look at the back of the paper at their spectral information. And let's see here. Preparation of DMC. So this is a written version of everything we did. And so here's the NMR data. We have a peak at 4.32 that integrates to 4 and looks like a single peak. And also 3.34 looks like a single peak and integrates to 6. And so comparing our numbers here, 4.31, 3.32, that's pretty close to our values, which is 4.32, 3.34. So they're a little bit low, but they're pretty much, that's definitely close enough. And the integrations work out perfectly, four to six. So we have our product. So what's all these other peaks? Well, this here, uh, let's see, that comes out at about 3.7. Check here at our solvent charts. And this is a list of uh, chemical shifts for a variety of solvents. And the high boiling solvent that's the hardest to remove was the 1,4-dioxane. And we can see that the 1,4-dioxane uh, comes in 
so 3.71 for the deuterated chloroform that we were in. And that's 3.70, so that's the dioxane peak right there. And this is the uh, solvent that we did the sample in the chloroform peak. And this is some unknown impurity. So overall, I'd say it looks uh, very good, and we did a great job. We got the product, and it should work for our purposes just fine.